Hi, I'm Joe Jansen, agricultural economist at the University of Illinois and a member of the Farm Doc team. And I'm Nick Paulson, also a faculty member in Ag and Consumer Economics at Illinois and a member of the Farm Doc team. All right. This morning, Friday, November 14th, 2025, the USDA conducted a major data release on U.S. crop production and global agricultural supply, demand, and trade. This was the first release since the conclusion of the 43-day government shutdown that began on October 1st. Uh, agricultural markets had eagerly looked forward to this release because USDA provides a sort of consensus-building projection for key agricultural economic indicators. Probably the biggest number that the trade was looking for was the national average corn and soybean yields uh, from the National Ag Statistics Service. Uh, those numbers were hotly anticipated, and USDA did maybe surprise the trade to some degree. Um, they lowered their corn yield estimate but by less than one bushel per acre from 186.7 bushels per acre to 186 bushels per acre. Soybean yield dropped from 53.5 to 53 bushels per acre. Even with these de a decline, both of those numbers would still be record national averages for, for corn and soybean yield. Uh, the numbers were based on uh, operator and field surveys that apparently ran in October and November in spite of the shutdown. Uh, sample sizes were similar to previous years, so we have no reason to believe that uh, these numbers aren't sort of collected in the same way and, and represent the same thing uh, that they would have in the, in the absence of a, a government shutdown. Uh, both of those numbers did surprise the trade to the upside, I think the trade thought especially that that corn yield number would come down uh, substantially more than it did. Uh, and both of those things weighed on prices today. And then looking at the Illinois specific uh, yield numbers that were in the November crop production report, um, in contrast to what we saw for those U.S. yields being re revised uh, down slightly, we saw the Illinois uh, corn yield projection uh, increased up to 221 bushels per acre. That was up two bushels per acre uh, relative to the September estimate and back up to the level that it was uh, projected at in August. Uh, also notably, I think that would be four bushels per acre higher than the uh, excellent yield uh, in the state of Illinois in 2024 of 217 bushels per acre. The projected soybean yield in Illinois for 2025 uh, was 65, which is held steady from the September ep uh, estimate uh, and up a bushel from the yield of 64 bushels per acre in 2024. USDA incorporated these yield estimates into the latest World Agricultural Supply and Demand Estimates, or WASDE, report. Uh, the WASDE balance sheet also saw revisions to beginning stocks for the 2025-26 marketing year. Uh, those came out originally back at the end of September, but hadn't been incorporated into the, the supply and demand tables until this point. Um, USDA also made some changes to corn exports, recognizing the strong uh, export sales pace that we've observed to this point, upping their uh, corn export number by 100 million bushels. Uh, the thing was that the sum of all these changes, both in terms of uh, production, beginning stocks, uh, and exports, really didn't change the overall balance sheet much. Um, projected corn ending stocks were up about 45 uh, million bushels. Uh, for the United States, and soybean ending stocks were down about 10 million bushels. But overall, negligible changes that b basically suggest um, we do have a big crop, um, and that cro the, the size of that crop might, uh, might weigh on prices, particularly for corn. Um, we did get some more detail on export sales that uh, might be uh, indicative of some forward-looking uh, changes. Particularly, we saw um, the USDA released uh, ex large export sales da data, the data that would typically come out daily when a large export sale, one in excess of a threshold of 100 million uh, metric tons, is made to a particular country in a particular day. Um, we saw uh, corn export sales, uh, large export sales, uh, between October 1st and today of about 3.3 million uh, metric tons. Uh, with Mexico being the largest buyer. Uh, for soybeans, the numbers were substantially lower, less than, uh, less than a million metric tons. China did come into the market, which was sort of something that the, I think a lot of market watchers were looking for, thinking about, you know, are we going to make export sales of soybeans to China? They have made some, uh, uh, slightly more than 300,000 metric tons, but that number in the context of overall U.S. export sales is pretty small. 
And despite maybe what would be viewed as uh, relatively neg negligible overall uh, balance sheet impacts in the latest report, uh, we did see a uh, increase in the projection for the 2025-26 marking your average price for corn. Uh, that's up 10 cents from the $3.90 projection of September to $4 in the November WASD. And for soybeans, uh, we saw a, a pretty sizable increase of 50 cents on that marking your average price. Um, up from $10 in September to $10.50 in November. Thanks for watching this video on the November uh, WASDE and crop production report releases from the USDA. Uh, please follow along and subscribe if you'd like to get future updates from the FarmDoc team here at Illinois.